crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, known in the land as Yeshua, his disciples traveled the nation of Israel to spread the news that the promised Messiah had come. For this had been Yeshua's final instruction. Go now and make disciples in all nations. Preach the good news that those who believe and are immersed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit shall be saved. One among these disciples was Judah, born in the village of Bethany near Jerusalem. Exactly one year after Yeshua's crucifixion, Judah returned to his hometown. The months of teaching had often been hard. For many did not want to believe that the Son of God, the Messiah, had finally come. But Judah knew that Yeshua was truly the promised Passover Lamb of God. I checked him over again this morning. It's perfect. We all know you're proud of your flock, Yosef. But father has a more critical eye. It's a fine lamb, Yosef. It's hard to believe another feast of Passover is almost upon us, mother. Does time move quicker as we age, or is it just me? Whatever it is, I need you up and underfoot. I won't be ready by sunset. Leia, Rifka, go finish cleaning the kitchen. Yes, Saka. It's up. You collect the wine, huh? And, uh, Joseph, take the lamb to the temple. They don't dawdle like last year. The cone closed the doors on you, and you almost left us without Pesach. Yosef, it's Zach. Uh, my sister's family passed your brother David on the road from Jerusalem. He'll be here, as promised. That's good news. The whole family will be together. Not the whole family. We'll be one brother short. He's not our brother any longer, Yosef. He's abandoned the faith of our sages. Many men find a new prophet who speaks to their hearts. Well, those men don't claim their prophets are the Messiah. He's our eldest brother. We can't just... Judah doesn't accept who we are or what we believe in. He has no place here. Perhaps it's we who aren't accepting him. I've heard some of Yeshua's teachings, Itzhak. They make sense. They make sense to us, someone who's naive. Not one who spent his whole life studying scriptures like me. Beware false messiahs, Yosef. Well done, Ima. Good. Now we put some back. But we worked all morning to get rid of it. It's part of our Passover ritual, Esther. Let's put some right here so Saba can find it. But why? We already know it's there. We could get rid of it. Esther, can you keep a secret? Sometimes. Our men need to feel like they've done something for Passover, too. This is one of the ways we do that. Oh, I get it. If Sabbath doesn't find it, is it okay for me to give him a hint? You do that. Very good, girls. Now, run to your Aunt Sarah's and fetch fresh linens. David's family will be here soon, and we need to make up the beds. Do you think they'll have news from Jerusalem? I'm sure they'll have plenty to tell, but no gossip until after the work is done. I just want to know if David met the men they call Yeshua. Leah! You know your father doesn't want us talking about him. But I only meant... We'll to... talk about it later. Now go on, do as your grandmother asked, and hurry. The Sabbath is almost upon us. I can't wait to see David and Rachel's new baby. And little Shmuel. Oh, look, it's Uncle Yosef. He's always getting distracted by something. <sighs> well, we better drag him home or the lamb will never be ready for Passover. Here, O Israel! Wait, I know that voice. A long time ago. Me too. 
God spoke to us in many ways through the prophet. Oh, it's Uncle Huda. But in these last days, he has spoken to home. us. He's talking about Yeshua. He was with him in Jerusalem. Through Yeshua, his son, whom he has appointed heir to all things. Does Abba know he's here? I don't know. I just found him myself. Yeshua shines with the radiance of God's glory. He is upheld by the power of God's word. He died to deliver us of our sins and now sits upon the right hand of God the Father. My father won't like this. He says speaking of Yeshua is blasphemy. He'll be happy to see his own brother, won't he? Rabbi, wait. We are the sons of Abraham, the chosen people of God. Yes, Zachariah, we are. Are you saying we're sinners? Quiet. Let you to speak. For he speaks the word of God. Let me ask you something, Zechariah. Are we Jews better than others? God chose us from all the nations and exalted us above them. Yes, yes. But all men are sinners, whether Jews or Gentiles, are they not? It is written in the scriptures that none is righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. No one seeks after God. The purpose of the law is to reveal sin in us. The more we know about God's laws, the clearer it becomes that we are not following them. That may be true, but now there is a true salvation. It does not come by following the law and doing good deeds only, Zechariah, but rather by what God through Yeshua has done for us. What did he ever do for me? I never even met the man. <laughs> Besides, I tried to keep the law. Trying is not enough. In the Torah of Moses it says, be holy as I am holy, does it not? Yes. And it says not to compare ourselves against Gentiles, but rather against the word of God. When we do that, we are all guilty before God. But now there is a true path to salvation. Yeshua, who has taken away God's wrath. And all we need to do to acknowledge this great gift is simply recognize him as the true Passover lamb of God. No. No, I don't believe any of this. That's almost sunset. My Passover table is waiting. Brothers, Yeshua the Messiah delivers us from all unrighteousness. He is our only hope. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The scriptures tell us, blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven. They tell us, blessed are those whose sins have been forgiven. And blessed is the man who sinned the Lord will not take into account. And blessed is he who will take no offense in this. My brother. How does a man show his faith, Yuda? Acknowledge your sins to God and accept Yeshua as the true Passover lamb. Do only this and your sins shall be forgiven. You shall be given the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is eternal life. Uh, Uncle Yuda, do you remember me? No. No, I... I... I I don't think I know my Leia. <laughs> my sister. When did you get here? And why haven't you come to the house? <laughs> I had people eager to hear the words of our Savior. Mother and father, are they well? They'll be better for seeing you. Hmm. 
Will I be accepted by all my brothers? Let me speak to Father. Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, when I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on rocky places. Because they had no root, they withered away. And some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns choked them out. But some seed fell upon the good earth and bring forth fruit even to a hundredfold. Let him that hath ears hear, him that hath eyes see. What do you think, Esther? Have you and the other women gotten rid of all the leaven? Well, there might be a little left, but I'm sure you can find it. Abba! David! Rahel! Baruch Hashem. Oh, you're finally here. Let me look at you. Hmm. You've turned into a fine boy. Where are Yosef and the girls? Well, here they come now. Father. Judah is in the village. He was teaching in the square. Still spouting the words of Yeshua's good news? Yes. His kind are everywhere in Jerusalem. Nothing but troublemakers. We've heard. Father, please ask him to come home. Yosef! Your brother is right. Father, you can't do this. What will people think? He is your brother, the firstborn of this family. Do you want him to spend Passover alone in the street? That's not the point, Father. He's trying to lead people away from the teachings of the sages. Have you ever even given him a chance to explain his beliefs? Yosef speaks the truth. Why not show Yuda the strength of your faith by listening to him? Go and bring Yuda home for Passover. I'll go with them. Joseph, your brothers can manage. And you need to get ready for the Sabbath. Go. I've dreamt of this day for so long, Jacob. Mm. Esther, let's make sure the house is ready. Hmm? I can't believe he's doing this. Remember how they used to argue when you to live that home? It'll be a disaster. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and I will punish the men who stagnate in spirit, who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good or evil. All leaven that may still be in my possession, which I have not seen, shall be annulled and considered as the dust of the earth. Amen. Amen. We'll talk again. Shalom, Yudah. Shalom, Alechem, David, my brother, Yitzhak. Father sent us to find you. He wants you home for Passover. Ah. And what do my brothers want? We honor our father's wishes as the commandments tell us. We don't want you causing any trouble. Trouble? There must be no talk of Yeshua. Why not? It is written and... I'm sick of you telling me what's written! Yes, we've studied the scriptures Even too. if we didn't have the same privileges. Privileges? Hey, you were the eldest. And granted time from your chores to study, you became a rabbi. Father gave you every opportunity. And look how you've thrown them all away. I have thrown nothing away. All I have done is discarded the dead 
traditions of man. I have not thrown away the scriptures such as others have done. You follow a false prophet, my brother. He is not a false prophet. He is the son of God. You have betrayed our family's honor and squandered its dreams. You bring nothing home to show for the hopes that were placed in you. I have acquired riches greater than man's imaginings since Yeshua came into my life. And I have come home to share them with you. Please don't hurt this family any more than you already have, Yuda. Or all our hearts will be as hard as his. Harden your hearts against me if you must. But do not harden your heart against God. Blessed art thou, O God, our Lord, who has given us life and sustained us and has enabled us to reach this season of joy. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Welcome home. Welcome home, brother. Shots. Come inside, Judah. We need to get ready for the seder. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, Say to the children of Israel, It is the Lord's Passover. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as an everlasting ordinance. Judah, you sit next to me. This way. We thought that when Yeshua was crucified, you might return home. I suppose you were busy teaching Yeshua's good news. Yeshua has no place in this house. I too believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, Itzhak. Yosef, keep quiet. Itzhak, enough. It's time to recite the Kiddush and begin. The first cup of wine the cup of Kiddush, the cup of sanctification. When the people of Israel escaped the slavery of the Pharaoh and went out of the land of Egypt, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. There, God told them through Moses and Aaron that they were his chosen people. Obey my voice and keep my covenant and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Yuda, you are the rabbi. Because God is all-knowing, and because he knew that we could not be as holy as he had asked, he gave us a new covenant which he spoke through the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, 
when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant I made with their fathers when I led them out of Egypt. For that covenant of mine they have broken. This time I will speak and write upon their hearts. How do we know that this new belief of yours is the fulfillment of Jeremiah's words? Because all that was written about the Messiah has come to pass in Yeshua of Nazareth. Then Yeshua must have known what was prophesied as well. He lived his entire life knowing his purpose and how it would end. One year ago, he knew that his hour of suffering for mankind was at hand. Yeshua told his disciples that that very day he would be betrayed. And that night, he was delivered to the hands of the pagans. Behold this unleavened bread. This is the bread of affliction that our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. Whoever is hungry, let him come and eat. Whoever is needy, let him come and eat Pesach. This year we are slaves. Next year, may we be free men. And I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will smite all the firstborn from man to beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments with a mighty hand, and with great awe, and with signs and wonders. Leavened or unleavened bread? Why on this night do we eat matzah? On other nights, we eat vegetables of any kind. But why on this night do we eat bitter herbs? On other nights, we don't even dip our vegetables once. Why on this night do we dip our vegetables twice? On other nights we eat either sitting or reclining. Why on this night do we all recline? <laughs> you have a fine son. What am I saying? We all have a fine nephew. <laughs> <laughs> all things written in the law that God gave Moses foreshadowed the redemption that he had planned for us. For those who believed, even before the foundations of this earth were laid. I've read the scriptures, Yudah. Good. And then you also know that when our forefathers, Adam and Eve, ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that God said that they should know death. So it is written. But God, in his grace, also promised a deliverer through the words of judgment in which he cursed the enemy of our soul, the serpent. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, and he shall strike you on the head and you shall strike at his heel. Later, through the prophets, God spoke of a deliverer like Moses, who was to deliver his chosen people. Stop this, Judah. You know I speak the truth, Isaac. Yeshua fulfilled what was written. He embodied everything the scriptures tell no, us. No, no, Judah, that's your truth. But as for you, O Bethlehem, too small to be numbered among the clans of Judah, from you one shall go forth, who shall be ruler of Israel. The prophet Isaiah foretold of his virgin birth. 
behold, a virgin shall give birth to a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel. God is with us. Stop this! Stop it now! I am only repeating what is written in the scriptures, Itzhak. How many times have you read these words yourself? Come back to the table. And listen to more of this blasphemy? I can't believe Father's letting him do this. He's only telling you what he knows of the scriptures. I've read the scriptures too, Ruth. I've taught them to my children. Yitzhak. Yeshua passed through this village and raised Eliezer from his tomb. We were there. We saw it with our own eyes. Remember what happened last year at Passover? We all saw the darkness that covered the earth when Yeshua died. We all felt the earth shake. The Kohen told us that the very veil from the holy temple was ripped from top to bottom. None of us thought such a thing was possible. What are you saying? All of this couldn't have been a mere coincidence. Perhaps we should take care that we don't find ourselves filled with pride and arguing against God. Please come back inside. Scriptures teach us that there are three parts to the Passover. Pesach, the lamb. Matzah, unleavened bread. Maror, bitter herbs. Just as this lamb must be without blemish, so Yeshua... So Yeshua was unblemished of sin. Sacrificed on the Passover that he might fulfill the law that Moses and the prophets had spoken. Did you know that the minute of his death was the very minute that the last Passover sacrifice was allowed in the temple? What does that have to do with anything? As Isaiah foretold, he was the sin offering for our salvation. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he never spoke a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and like a sheep before the shearer he stood dumb, silent before those who condemned him. Yet he had done no wrong, nor ever spoken an evil word. He is the true unleavened bread that came down from heaven. Leaven is a symbol of sin and corruption, but the Messiah was pure and holy. The Passover bread is called the bread of affliction. And truly, the Messiah was afflicted. See the scars, like the scars the Roman whips cut into his back. That was God's punishment because he was a false messiah. 
Just as this bread is bruised by the fire, so Yeshua was bruised by the fire of God's wrath, due to us, but poured upon him. See the holes, like the holes that the nails made in the spear that cut into his side. Yeshua's body was broken unto death, that we might have life. The bitter herbs remind us of the suffering the slave masters of Egypt inflicted upon our ancestors, but even more, they talk of the suffering of the Messiah for our sins. If he's the Messiah, why did God allow him to die such a shameful death? Have you not read what Isaiah prophesied? Yet it was God's will to bruise him and to fill him with grief. King David prophesied of a Messiah's crucifixion in the Psalms. A band of evil has encompassed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. This was written a thousand years before the birth of Yeshua. Just as the way of judgment delivered our fathers from slavery in Egypt, and just as the blood of an innocent lamb delivered our firstborn from certain death. So the blood of Yeshua delivers us from eternal damnation. His final words from the cross were, it is finished. He knew that he had fulfilled the prophecies and taken away our sins. And that is why this night is different from all other nights, Shmuel, and why the cup that we are about to drink is called the cup of judgment. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us to eat your Passover. Amen. Yuda, if Yeshua was the Messiah, why is there no peace in Israel? Because we did not want it to happen. Because we would not accept him as our king. We betrayed him and turned him over to the pagans and watched as he was crucified on the cross. But God raised him from the dead. And will he come back? He will come back to reclaim Israel in her hour of greatest tribulation. Tribulation that will cross the entire face of the earth. And that is when the prophecy shall be fulfilled. Itzak. Leah was right. It's as though Yuda has been touched by the hand of God. Don't tell me you're believing this. This false prophet is poisoning our family. No, no, he's not. Only one who was there to see the truth with his own eyes could speak with Yuda's strength. I think you might be right. Even when Father criticizes Yuda, he admits that he seeks after the truth. 
Disappointed, Shmuel. Even though Esther has won the prize, you can still win what this represents. Following his arrest and his crucifixion, Yeshua's body was wrapped in linen. The way we, we wrap this unleavened bread, because the Sabbath was upon the land, and he could not be buried. He was placed inside a rich man's tomb. A stone was placed over the opening, and Roman soldiers stood guard to make sure that no one would take the body. After the Sabbath, the women came to prepare the body for burial and to wash it. But when they went into the tomb, the tomb was empty. He had risen. An angel stood guard and spoke to them and said, Yeshua was not there, nor was he to be found among the dead. He had risen. Later, when Shimon and Yochanan came, they knew beyond all doubt that Yeshua was not dead, nor had his body been stolen. What did they see? The talit, which covered Yeshua's head, was there by the side of the tomb, folded by him. Proving beyond all doubt that he had risen. And the Afikomen of our Passover foretold just such a thing? Just as a child who finds the Afikomen is rewarded, so are we, the children of God, rewarded by finding Yeshua. But our reward is far, far greater. It is the gift of eternal life. Is all this mere coincidence? Or is it prophecy fulfilled? While they were eating, Yeshua took bread, broke it, and said, Eat of this, for this is my body. Truly the bread of affliction is the body of the Messiah. It is time for the third cup. The cup of redemption. The third cup represents the third I will of God. I will redeem you. This was his third promise to us in Egypt. This was the cup that Yeshua took and gave thanks with and gave to his disciples, saying, Drink ye from this, for this is my blood, 
the blood of the new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of our sins. The fourth cup, the cup of Hallel, the cup of praise, that all who believe in him will drink in God's kingdom when we are gathered unto him. As the Lamb of Egypt spared our firstborn from God's wrath, so Yeshua's blood poured on our hearts who caused the angel of death to pass over us in the hour of judgment. Judah, Judah. Why are you the only rabbi who knows the truth? When our forefathers were delivered from Egypt and everyone witnessed the exodus of our people? What has your Messiah done except divide our people? You know as well as I do, Yitzhak, but there are many priests and Pharisees who believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. And all of you tailor the scriptures to say what you want them to say. You know the scriptures as well as I do, Itzhak. Tell me, what word have I changed? What makes you so sure? What makes you so utterly convinced he's the promised one? Because I was there, Itzhak from the miracles to the cross. I was by his side. I saw those miracles. I heard him speak the words of God, his father. saw the pain. I was there when he was crucified. I witnessed heaven's tears. I saw it all. Several days later, Cleopas and I we were walking to the village of Imaus. We were talking about Yeshua, about how he had died, and when someone joined us, asked us what we were talking about. And I told him, surely you, you must have heard about the terrible suffering of Yeshua of Nazareth in Jerusalem, what they had done to him. And that we had heard that he, that he had now risen. This man laughed and said to us, O oh, foolish men and slow of heart not to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer? so that he could enter into his glory. At that moment we realized it was Yeshua. We ran to Jerusalem and we told the others and at that moment he appeared to us again. had risen. Father, surely you don't believe this. Why don't you say something to him?
as Yeshua arose to the heavens, his final words to his disciples were these. I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. God. Therefore, go and make disciples in all nations, immersing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Teach them to obey all the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this, that I am with you always, even to the end of the world. <laughs>